The Spitfire Formula 4 Lock-In. Does it really work? Well, I've been skating these for a while, and the short answer is yes. Now, let's take a quick look at these. These are 54 millimeter Spitfire Lock-In 99A. So the first thing I noticed, my absolute first impression when going on to these was the contact patch is huge. So it's probably a bit bigger than a conical even. Now the contact patch is the part from where it rounds over to where it starts to round over here. So it's the part that's actually hitting the concrete. So as soon as I jumped on these, the first thing I noticed was rough asphalt. Everything felt like so much smoother than I was used to. I could actually skate from A to B on this deck and not need like cruiser wheels and stuff. Of course, it's a little bit rougher than cruiser wheels, but it was still a dramatic improvement from the skinny small wheels I usually ride. So the second thing I noticed about these as soon as I started skating them was trying to do flip tricks. These are a big wheel. So if you're a tech guy like me, you're gonna struggle with them. So the first thing I tested was to see if it works on skate light. And I would say, no, it's like most street wheels. It's a little bit too slippery for skate light. Because of the width, it gives it a little bit more grip, but I still didn't feel comfortable. It was still a bit too slippy. Now, the next thing I tested was how does it pinch on flat bars? It actually pinches quite well for things like feeble grinds and 50-50s. But when I tried 50-50s, what I do notice is while it does lock in very well, I think because of the shape, because it's so sharp, there's a tiny bit more friction when grinding. So I felt the need to lean back just a little bit more on my grinds to make sure that I was actually pushing through them and not slowing down. So next up, I wanna test these out on transition. So the size and width of these is fantastic for carving around. I mean, they're smooth and fast. So next, I want to get into locking in on coping. So no problems yet. It does help me lock into things. Now, because it is so aggressive and abrupt, I don't think I'm imagining it, but I do notice that I have to put slightly more effort into lifting my tricks off of the coping. And in skateboarding, we are talking about muscle memory and millimeters, so it does make a difference. Next, let's get into grinding. I'm gonna do some backside 50-50s. So if I'm doing a 50-50 grind, and I lock in improperly and I'm grinding with both my wheels against back here, it's not too noticeable. And I think because it's flat and you're not getting a huge amount of surface area or the angle of the lock-in rubbing against here. But when I get a properly pinched locked-in 50-50 with my toe edge wheel touching this side and my heel edge wheel touching this side, I start to notice that the sharp angles of the wheels bite a little bit and it makes this sort of squeaking sound. So listen. It slows me down a tiny bit, which again, we're talking about muscle memory and years of doing tricks. I do find that I have to put a little more concerted effort into leaning back and into lifting my wheels off. So I do still notice the same phenomena a little bit on front side. So what I wanted to find out is, am I noticing this simply because I'm riding a bigger wheel and these are the characteristics of a larger wheel? I'm not sure. So what I'm gonna do to test this is I'm gonna flip these wheels around because the outside edge of this is shaped the same as a conical. So if I flip these around and I still notice the exact same thing, then it has a lot more to do with the properties of a bigger wheel than to do with the sharp edge.
now that these have been switched over, I did notice that there was still a rubbing feeling that I thought was from the lock-ins. So it still definitely had like a rub. I could feel the wheels having to be slid across the coping a little bit. So what I can safely say is that the majority of that is caused by a bigger wheel. And also even the conical itself, the conical cutout, actually still provides like a pretty large flat surface. So a taller wheel than I'm used to and a slightly taller flat surface was creating more rubbing than I'm used to. Now the one thing I wasn't able to do was to get them to squeal again. So they weren't making the same squealing noise that the sharper lock inside was making. I would say four out of five of it was just a bigger wheel than I'm used to. And then the one out of five was the lock inside giving a little more friction making it squeal. So if you're already used to riding a tall wheel and you already ride conicals, I don't think that you are going to notice a big difference in friction when you switch to a lock-in. So let's get into how these felt flipped around on the conical side. So I wasn't really noticing any discernible difference. Now, I also waxed the rail really well. So. I suppose if you want to feel the glory of the Spitfire Formula 4 or the conical and you're used to a littler wheel and you want to go up, I don't know, bring wax, lean back and don't be a baby. So let's try and flat spot these now, shall we? So, no actual flat spots. I can see a lot of like claw marks on them where it's been shredding it but I really can't see or feel any flat spots. Wow! So in almost a month of skating these I wasn't able to flat spot them in regular use and in trying super hard on super sandpapery ground I was not able to flat spot them intentionally. Very durable wheel. The other thing I noticed is because they are so wide it's taken me a really long time to even start to see any coning on these wheels so they also last a really long time because of how wide they are. So I've just been trying to crooked grind this ledge on the conical side of the wheel to test it for lock-in ability and I wasn't noticing it being very easy. This ledge has a really round edge and I always slip off it all the time, so I really struggle. So I'm gonna flip these around back to the lock-in side and see if I notice any noticeable difference because we wanna answer the question, do lock-ins help you lock in? So they're switched around, the ledge is well waxed. Let's see what I notice. So I really couldn't tell if it was helping me on my regular crooked grinds, but what I did learn is that my form was off. So as I was grinding, what I learned was I need to put more weight pushing my board back here to stop it from falling off. So I made an improvement in that point, and they were helping me lock in in as much as I was locking in once I made that improvement in form. However, what I did notice is when I was trying frontside crooked grinds, which I need all the help I can get, I really struggle with those, I was locking in a little bit more consistently and grinding for a little bit longer. So I think it does make a bit of a difference. I was noticing it on my frontside crooked grinds. Okay, so I thought I had wrapped up the review that day after doing a bunch of crooked grinds and then I did a bunch more dad bod skating. And I figured I'd done a pretty good job reviewing these wheels, but you know what? I haven't directly compared them to other wheels. So today what I'm going to do is skate this bowl really quickly with my like 49 millimeter Spitfire Classic Formula 4s. And I also have a pair of 54 millimeter Formula 4 99A Classic shape. So take a look, it's a pretty dramatic difference in shape. Now this is the shape I'm used to, yet it's 54 millimeters similar to this. And I want to do a little skating on this to be able to do a more direct comparison in wheels of similar size. Alright, 
So the small, more rounded wheels definitely have a lot less resistance when I'm doing my grinds. It's much closer to the comfort zone that I've had for years because, well, it is. So on the other hand though, I can feel that I'm not locked in as well. So I have to be up on there a little more tentatively. Now let's set these up. There they are, all bright and shiny and new. Let's give them a few tries on some flip tricks. Let's try it on coping and see how it feels. So I can, without hesitation, say that these immediately felt like home. Like these definitely feel better in the bowl than my 51s, yet I still have that really familiar feeling of how I like to lock in and come out. So no hesitations in saying that this is what I prefer. Now we have to remember that it really does come down to preferences. Like everybody is gonna have different preferences and these are similar to the shape of wheels that I have always ridden. So I'm immediately gonna feel more comfortable on them. So to answer the question, do Spitfire lock-ins help you lock in? At least from this skateboarder's perspective, I would have to say yes, they do help you lock in. But there is a yin and a yang to everything. And so the cost at locking in better is a little bit more friction when you're on the coping or doing your tricks. So I noticed it less on street and ledges. The lock-in was actually helpful and I didn't notice that friction. But when it came to coping and occasionally flat bars, I did notice the extra friction from the wider surface area that's rubbing and catching. So these are a big burly wheel that a technical skater is gonna struggle with, as I have experienced. If you're kind of a burly street skater who wants to get over a lot of rough ground, they're gonna be fantastic because they have such a wide surface area to ride on. They're wider, I think, than the conical full in terms of the actual surface area that you're riding on. So again, great coverage, really smooth ride, very fast, but probably not a lot different than a conical full. I'm not a good enough rail or handrail skater to truly determine the benefits of these, I would be really interested in trying these in a smaller wheel because Spitfire does shrink them in width as they go down. But moving on, I hope you guys found this review useful. If you were interested in the Spitfire lock-in or considering buying them, now you know a little more about them. If you found this video useful, share it, leave a comment telling me what you thought. Thanks for watching. Till next time.